I wanted to show you this new top that I refashioned and some tips and tricks for how you can make one for yourself. I will tell you more about the top, the fabric I used, and what I'll do for my next version. But first, be sure to like this video so other people will see it. Subscribe and click the bell. Videos highlighting my makes and sewing pattern reviews go up every Monday. I already have dozens for you to watch. If you're looking for a little binge, check out the playlist in the top right hand corner of your screen. It opens in a new tab so you won't lose your place here. And if you're new, welcome! I am Lindsay. I sew all my own clothes and I'm so glad you found me. Be sure to introduce yourself in the comments section below so I can give you a formal welcome. All right, back to my make. This was one of the works in progress projects that I finished last month, highlighted briefly in my monthly makes video. Uh, but here is the TikTok where I documented kind of how it came together. Oh, and welcome to day six of my unfinished project challenge where I am trying to sew an unfinished project every single day. Written them all down on these little postcards and I'm drawing one at random to help me decide what to make because decision fatigue is real. All right, today's project, red silk refashion. This one should be good, let me go grab it. All right, so this is a 100% silk Maggie London dress that I found at Goodwill. It's very long, <laughs> as you can see, um, and so I have a lot of fabric to work with. The reason why I'm not just wearing this as is is because this is just not my style. Like I just don't wear fancy dresses like this. I just had to put it on to see what we were working with here. It's obviously like too big in some places. The straps are too big. The bodice is way too big. But then when we get down here to my hips, it's too fitted because I'm a pair. Um, so as much as I like want to keep this as a dress, I feel like we're gonna be better off if I make it into a skirt. Dang, or even should I just add a waist seam? And then we'll have a look like this and then I can fix the straps. Would I wear that with like a jean jacket and like sneakers and like make it a little more casual? I think so, okay. You guys are not ready. <laughs> look how cute. Look how cute it turned out. I absolutely love it. And surprise bonus part is that it's actually two pieces. So I can wear the top with like jeans or pants or whatever, and then I can wear the skirt with like just a plain white tank top and make it casual, or I can wear them together and have a cute little dress. I am so excited about this one. Easily the best make of the week. Um, so I'm really glad I took it, because it was, it was a lot to do. Um, it, it took quite a while, so I'm glad that we did it. Come back tomorrow where we'll do this all over again. <laughs> I did not use a pattern for this make since it was a refashion, but I did find a good pattern dupe if you're wanting to make one for yourself. Check out McCall's 8199. Once you get past how it fits the model, you can see the design lines are very similar to mine. The only difference is that the skirt portion is gathered to the bust cups, making it like a little bit more of a relaxed kind of vibe. If fitting that one makes you nervous or you don't like the gathers, check out McCall's 7958. This one does not have the gathered center front of the cups, but the skirt portion fits the same. For the back of this one, instead of this little like swoopy open back design, just cut the back skirt on the fold and insert the zip, like extend it past the waist. Of course, you could also buy both of these patterns and do a pattern mashup with the bodice from 8199 and the skirt from 7958. Up to you. Regardless of the pattern you choose, fit is critical with sweetheart bustier type designs like this one. I think the reason why mine is so flattering is because it just fits so well. Be sure to grab my fast fit workbook to help you make a garment that fits better the first time. It will help you figure out which size to make and any basic alterations you need right out of the gate. Then you can make a muslin and decide on any final tweaks. It is available on my website insidethehem.com and I have linked it for you in the description box. The fabric is another star of the show here. It is 100% silk and a bit on the weightier side. It makes me think it's some kind of shantong or maybe, maybe a twill. I looked everywhere to see if this fabric was for sale by the yard and could not find it. But that doesn't mean that you can't make your own version. When I'm looking for silk, I always head to New York Designer Fabrics. They almost exclusively sell silk, meaning 
They know good quality. They have a ton of variety. <laughs> Head to their Shantung section and find a color you love. I think this style of top would be beautiful in a solid color for the holidays. So you saw on the TikTok that I also made a skirt with this fabric. I'm going to model that and show it to you as well, just not in this video. You'll have to come back next week to see how it looks all done up and styled how I would wear it right now. In the meantime, check out last week's Make It Monday video. It is a raincoat I made from a seamwork pattern. I've linked it here in the insulate. Again, check the description box for links to all of the products I mentioned in this video, including my fast fit workbook and the two patterns I mentioned, as well as New York designer fabrics. I hope you're inspired by this make and venture out to make a silk bustier top for yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon. Bye!